Welcome to the Rare History Channel. Top 10 Facts About Italian Gangster Sam Giangana Salvatore Muni Giancana, born Gilormo Giangana, was a notorious American organized crime figure who rose to prominence as the head of the Chicago outfit from 1957 to 1966. Born in Chicago to Italian immigrant parents, Giancana began his criminal career as a member of the 42 Gang and quickly gained a reputation in the underworld, attracting the attention of the outfit's leaders. Fact number 1. Giancana was born Gilormo Giangana. Salvatore Muni Giancana, born Gilormo Giangana, was ushered into the world on May 24, 1908, in the Patch neighborhood of Chicago, Illinois. He was the offspring of Antonio Giangana and Antonia de Simona, Italian immigrants who had relocated to the United States from Castelvetrano, Sicily. Giancana's father arrived in 1905, while his mother followed suit in 1906, both seeking to build a better life for themselves and their family. Giancana was one of eight siblings, the names of whom are not widely documented in readily available sources. Unfortunately, Antonia passed away in 1910, and Antonio subsequently remarried Mary Leonardi. Number 2. Giancana was involved in John F. Kennedy's victory in the 1960 presidential election. According to certain narratives, Salvatore Muni Giancana and the organized crime syndicate, the Mafia, may have played a participatory role in John F. Kennedy's successful bid for the presidency in the 1960 election. This assertion remains shrouded in controversy and speculation, with limited concrete evidence to substantiate the claim. Nevertheless, it has been postulated that Giancana and the Mafia may have wielded their influence and resources to sway the outcome of the election in Kennedy's favor. It is worth noting that such allegations, even if plausible, cannot be definitively confirmed without further investigation and corroborating evidence. Number 3. Tony Accardo stepped down for Giancana in 1957. In the aftermath of the year 1957, Accardo relinquished his official title as the head of the outfit to Sam Giancana. Despite ceding the mantle of authority, Accardo still wielded considerable influence and commanded deference from the rest of the organization. He took on the role of consigliere, retreating from the operational aspects of the outfit but maintaining a significant degree of power. Giancana was required to secure the endorsement of both Accardo and Paul the waiter Ricca on weighty matters, including matters of lethal import. This arrangement ensured that Accardo remained a force to be reckoned with, even as he operated in the background. Number 4. He was recruited by the CIA in a plot to assassinate Cuban leader Fidel Castro. In the decade of the 1960s, Salvatore Muni Giancana was reportedly co-opted by the Central Intelligence Agency CIA, as part of a scheme to eliminate Fidel Castro, the then-dominant figure in Cuba. The precise details and extent of Giancana's involvement in this covert operation remain obscure and disputed, with conflicting accounts and limited, verifiable information. Nevertheless, it is widely acknowledged that the CIA engaged in numerous plots to neutralize Castro and disrupt the Cuban regime during this period and that Giancana may have played a role in one or more of these endeavors. Number 5. Conspiracy theorists consider Giancana along with mafia leaders associated with the assassination of Kennedy. Conspiracy theorists posit that Salvatore Muni Giancana, along with other prominent mafia leaders such as Santo Traficante Jr. and Carlos Marcelo, may have been implicated in the assassination of John F. Kennedy. This notion is based on a confluence of circumstantial evidence and speculative reasoning, including the alleged association between Giancana and the mafia with Kennedy's electoral victory in 1960, and the supposed involvement of organized crime figures in anti-Castro activities coordinated by the CIA. However, these theories are widely considered to be unverified and lack empirical support. It is worth noting that the official investigation into Kennedy's death concluded that Lee Harvey Oswald acted alone in carrying out the assassination, a conclusion that has been the subject of much scrutiny and debate. Nevertheless, the conspiracy theories linking Giancana, Trafficanti, Marcello, and other mafia figures to Kennedy's assassination continue to persist in popular culture and remain the subject of ongoing speculation. Number 6. Giancana was matrimony with Angeline de Tolve. 
On September 23, 1933, Salvatore Muni Giancana entered into matrimony with Angeline de Tolle, the offspring of Italian immigrants hailing from the region of Basilicata. The union was blessed with three progeny, Antoinette, born 1935, Bonnie, born 1938, and Francine, born 1945. Tragically, Angeline passed away on April 23, 1954, leaving Giancana to assume the mantle of sole parent to his daughters. As for Giancana's involvement in organized crime, it is widely documented that he maintained his prominent position in the mafia following his wife's death, continuing to exert influence and control over a variety of illicit activities in the decades that followed. Number 7. The outfit gang group where Giancana worked was initially known as the 42 Gang. In his formative years, Salvatore Muni Giancana affiliated himself with the 42 Gang, a group of juvenile street urchins who operated under the auspices of political boss Joseph Esposito. The moniker of the 42 Gang was a tongue-in-cheek reference to Ali Baba and the 40 Thieves, reflecting their belief in their own superiority. Through his association with the gang, Giancana established a reputation for himself as an accomplished getaway driver, a prodigious earner, and a ruthless killer. Following the murder of Joseph Esposito, in which Giancana was allegedly implicated, the 42 gang was subsumed into the Chicago outfit and came under the control of prominent organized crime figures such as Frank the Enforcer Nitty, Paul the Waiter Rica, and Tony Joe Batter Zicardo. Number 8. Giancana's arrest scandal report started in 1925. Salvatore Muni Giancana had a tumultuous relationship with the law, starting with his first arrest in 1925 for auto theft. Despite his young age, he quickly rose through the ranks of criminal activity and by the time he was 20 years old, he was the primary suspect in three separate murder investigations. Nevertheless, he was never officially tried or convicted in connection with these crimes. In 1929, Giancana was found guilty of the crimes of burglary and larceny and was sentenced to serve a term of one to five years in the Joliet Correctional Center. After serving three years and nine months, he was eventually released in 1932. Number 9. Giancana became the first 42-er to join the Chicago outfit in the 1930s. During the late 1930s, Giancana was inducted into the Chicago Outfit, a notorious organized crime syndicate. Throughout the 1940s and 1950s, he exerted a significant amount of influence and control over the illicit trade of gambling and liquor distribution in Louisiana through his close acquaintance, H. A. Hull, Killian. Through Killian's association with Carlos Marcelo, he was able to monopolize the dispensation of liquor licenses in New Orleans. In 1939, Giancana was found guilty of bootlegging and was subsequently incarcerated in Leavenworth Prison and the Terre Haute Federal Correctional Complex for a period of four years. Number 10. Giancana was died of seven gun wounds. Giancana, formerly known as Giormo Giangana, met his untimely demise on June 19, 1975. The evening before he was scheduled to appear before the church committee, investigating the alleged collusion between the CIA and Cosa Nostra, an assailant entered his Oak Park, Illinois residence and perpetrated a violent act, shooting Giancana seven times with a .22 caliber pistol in the head and neck. The act was discovered by Joseph D. Percio, Giancana's caretaker, who found his body in the basement kitchen. Giancana was buried alongside his spouse Angeline in a family mausoleum at Mount Carmel Cemetery in Hillside, Illinois. Speculation surrounding the motives for his murder abounded, with some alleging that it was related to his perceived loyalty to Tony Spilatro, a rising figure within the Chicago outfit, despite the latter's involvement in problems with the so-called skim. Salvatore Bastone, a capo within the outfit, allegedly commented that there were a million reasons for Giancana's murder and that he should have remembered what happened to Bugsy Siegel. Number 11. 